Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are diving into one of the most exciting new features of C-Sharp 13, the introduction of the new lock object for better thread synchronization. If you are a developer working with multi-threaded applications, this update is going to make your life a lot easier. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon that way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. C-Sharp 13 exploring new lock object for better thread synchronization. First of all, we need to understand why is this important. Whether you are new to multi-threading or have years of experience, thread synchronization can be tricky. Managing access to shared resources between threads can sometimes lead to issues like deadlocks or performance bottleneck. But with this new lock object in C-Sharp 13, things get a lot smoother and faster. Problem with traditional lock. Let's start by revisiting how we used to handle thread synchronization in older version of C-Sharp. Typically, you would use the lock statement with an object to protect critical section like this. So here what I have done, I have created a shared counter variable. That's what I have written, private static int counter equal to zero. So here I have initialized this counter variable of int data type and I have marked with the static keyword and I have initialized with the zero value of it. Basically, I have created a shared counter variable. Then what I am doing, I am just creating an instance of the object. That's what I have written, object, the score lock object is equal to new object. So basically, this arbitrary object instance I am creating. Then there is a method update counter. Inside this, what I am doing, I am just using the lock keyword. Inside the lock keyword, I am just passing this lock object. So this lock object is nothing but the an arbitrary object instance that I am passing. And inside this lock object, we are having critical section. So only one thread can execute this block at a time. And then inside this, what I am doing, I am just incrementing the counter variable by one. That's what I have written counter plus plus over here. So here the lock statement ensures that only one thread can access the said variable at a time, right? In this case, counter variable. Why this works fine, it has some downside. When you are dealing with more complex scenarios such as high thread contention or potential deadlocks. So if you see this image over here that I have shown at the right hand side, so here a resource conflict, this struggle of the concurrent thread. So this image basically depicts multiple computer threads trying to access the same resources like a database or chip all at once. The lines represent the thread converging on the shared resources which creates congestion or conflict. So basically it highlights the typical problems developer face when managing thread contention in multi-threaded programming. So that's what with the help of this image I just want to show that there is a resource conflict. So imagine multiple threads trying to access the same resources all at once so this can create a congestion and conflict. That's where the new lock object comes to the rescue. Solution of the ever problem, a new lock object in C-Sharp 13. Now with C-Sharp 13, we have a more flexible and efficient way to handle thread synchronization using the new lock object. It offers a cleaner API for locking and unlocking shared resources, making it easier for us as a developer to prevent conflicts between the threads. So how does it work? When a thread wants exclusive access to a critical section of code, it first enters the lock. Once inside, no other thread can access that section until the lock is exited. So basically, there are four ways by which we can use the new lock object. Number one, simple way using traditional lock keyword and pass lock object in it to enter and exit the critical section. So here, what I am doing, I am just creating an instance. So here also, I have defined this shared counter variable and I have initialized with this zero for here, right? Then what I am doing, I am just creating an instance of the system.threading.lock sealed class. That's what I have written lock my lock is equal to new lock. So instead of creating an arbitrary object instance, here I am creating a lock object instance. That's what I have written this statement lock my lock is equal to new lock. And then inside this update counter, again I am using the lock keyword. Inside that, instead of passing arbitrary object instance, I am passing lock object instance, which is nothing but my lock over here. So inside this lock, there is a critical section, so only one thread can execute this block at a time. Here what I am doing, I am just incrementing counter variable by one. That's what I have written counter plus plus over. So you have seen here still we can use the lock keyword but now pass the lock object instead of a simple object. Why? For more control and efficiency. If you see this image again right hand side, so efficient synchronization threads flowing smoothly to shared resource. What this image depicts thread which is smoothly taking turns accessing and releasing a shared resource like a computer chip or database. So basically it highlights how the threads work in an organized way without any conflict or congestion. So it's demonstrate how proper thread synchronization works, right? 
Number two, using interscope method with using. Another great feature is the interscope method, which automatically exits the lock when done. We just need to wrap it in the using block and it takes care of the rest. That's what I have written over here. Lock my lock is equal to new lock. So basically what I'm doing from this statement, I'm creating an instance of the system.threading lock sealed class. That's what I have written this statement. Then inside this update counter method, I'm using this using block. And inside this using block, I have written my lock.interscope. Basically, I have called this interscope method of this lock class. That's what I have written my lock.interscope, right? Inside this critical section, I am just going to increase the counter by one. That's what I have written counter plus plus. So this is the critical section where only one thread can execute this block at a time. So this is the super handy, especially when handling this, since the lock is automatically released. Now come to the third one, manually entering and exiting the lock using enter and exit method. So we can also manually enter and exit the lock using enter and exit method. So this gives you full control and you ensure the lock is always released using a try finally block. That's what I have written try and finally block over here. So first of all, what I'm doing over here, I'm creating an instance of this lock sealed class. That's what I have written lock my lock is equal to new lock. First of all, Inside this update counter, what I have done, I have called this inter method. That's what I have written my log dot inter. And then I have written the try and finally block. Inside the try block, which is nothing but critical section. So what I'm doing inside that, I'm just incrementing this counter variable by one. That's what I have written counter plus plus. And in the finally block, what I'm doing, I'm just issuing this exit method. That's what I have written my log dot exit. So this statement ensure lock is always released even in case of an any exception. Now, finally, we have using try enter for non blocking attempts. We have the try enter method. This allows us to attempt entering the lock without waiting indefinitely if another thread already holds the lock. So, this method is useful when we don't want a thread to wait forever if the lock is already in use by the another threads. So, how we are going to implement that? So, first of all, I need to create a lock object instance. So first of all, what I need to do, I need to create an instance of this lock sealed class. That's what I have written lock my lock is equal to new lock. And inside this update counter, again, I need to use my lock dot try enter method. And then I need to use this try and finally block inside the try, which is nothing but the critical section where I'm just going to increment the counter by one. So only one thread can execute this block at a time. That's what we say as a critical section, right? And finally block again, I'm just calling this exit method. So my log dot exit. So this exit method basically ensures us the lock is always released even in case of any exception occurs. So this approach is useful when you don't want a thread to wait forever if the lock is already in use by the another thread. Okay, so let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. Okay, so we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo on how to use the new lock object introduced in C Sharp 13 as a part of .NET 9 to handle thread synchronization in multi-threaded application. So in this program, what I'm trying to show you, I'm going to show you four different ways to manage access to a shared resources here the counter variable using the lock object and making sure that only one thread can access the critical section of the code at a time. To show the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named new lock object C sharp demo in Visual Studio 2022 preview mode so that we can utilize .NET 9 framework. Okay, so here we have program.cs file. In program.cs file, first of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, using system.threading. Why I have added system namespace? Because it gives the basic functionality like console.write line. And I have used system.threading because this namespace contains classes and methods for working with threads and thread synchronization. And here itself, new lock object as a sealed class is added. So in this program, we have two classes. One is the sealed class named lock object demo, and the second one is the simple class named program. So first of all, let's review this sealed class, what we have. So in this sealed class lock object demo, I have defined a private field, my lock, which is an instance of the new lock object. That's what I have written private read only lock my lock is equal to new lock. So basically I am creating an instance of the lock sealed class and storing in this variable my lock. And I have also defined a counter variable as the shared resource that multiple threads would be trying to modify. So here the goal is to make sure only one thread modifies counter at any time to avoid conflict. So here I have written four methods where I will be showcasing the ways to utilize the new locker. 
The first method is modify with lock keyword. So this method uses the traditional lock keyword with the new lock object. And if you see this method, what I have done over here, I am using this lock keyword and here instead of passing the arbitrary object instance, I have passed this instance of this lock object. That's what I have written lock my lock. And inside that what I am doing, I am just printing this statement lock thread whatever the thread id entering the critical section and then counter counter value is going to get printed over here and then i am incrementing the counter variable y1 that's what i have written counter plus plus and then i am just printing this again counter value and what i am doing i am just using thread dot sleep 100 so basically i am simulating some work over here and finally i am just printing this statement lock thread thread current thread minus thread id exiting critical section so basically entering and exiting and in between whatever i am activity in doing i am just going to print it over here okay so that's what this modify with lock keyword is going to do that so this approach is very simple and automatic locking and it is a thread safe also and it is a backward compatible as well because in the earlier version also we were using this lock keyword instead of you know uh, right now i am passed this instance of this lock field class Previously, we were used to pass arbitrary object instance, right? So only that change happened over here. Everything remains. So that's what this approach is simple. Okay. So next we have this method modify with interscope. So in this method, I have used the interscope method of the lock object, which is wrapped in the using block. That's what I have written using my lock dot interscope over. So this using keyword automatically ensures that the lock is released when the critical section is finished even if an exception occurs and in the critical section what i am doing i am just going to print this statement this thread entering critical section and then i am incrementing this counter variable by one that's what i have written counter plus plus and then i'm just printing this interscope counter and whatever the value it got incremented final value i'm just going to print in this statement and then i'm just again simulating some work so i'm using this sleep statement over here and finally when interscope thread is exiting critical section so i'm printing this statement okay so that's what this modify with interscope is next method is modify with manual inter exit in this method i wrote the code that manually enters and exit the lock by calling my lock inter and my lock exit that's what first of all inside this method what i have done i have used this inter method so that's what i have written my lock dot inter so manually entering the lock using the inter method over and then we have the try block so this is nothing but our critical section okay inside that what i'm doing i'm just printing this statement manual inter exit thread entering critical section then i'm incrementing this counter variable by one that's what i have written counter plus plus and then i'm printing manual inter exit counter and the counter value whatever it came i'm just going to print it and then again i'm just simulating some work so i have written this statement thread dot sleep 100 and finally when the manual inter exit thread is exiting critical section so i'm printing this statement over here. and in any case uh, what i'm doing i'm just exiting this how i'm going to exit it with the help of this exit method that's what i have issued my lock dot exit so it ensures lock is always released even in the case of the exception so here you have seen a try finally block ensure that the lock is released properly even if something goes wrong right the key point of this approach is that we have manual control over entering and exiting the lock. It's useful for more complex scenarios where manual handling is needed. Okay. Last but not the least, we have this modify with try inter method. So in this method, I use try inter method to attempt entering the lock without waiting indefinitely. If the lock is unavailable because another thread holds it, the method skips the critical section and print a message indicating that it could not acquire the lock. Okay. I have written if my log dot try enter then what i'm doing i'm just using this critical section in critical section again i'm just printing this statement try enter thread thread id entering critical section and incrementing this counter variable by one that's what i have written counter plus plus and then i'm just printing this counter variable value over here that's what i have written try enter counter counter then Inside this method, I'm just making sure that that some work is going on. So basically, I'm just simulating some work. So I have written this statement thread dot sleep hundred. Finally, what I'm doing, I'm just printing this statement and making sure that try enter thread exiting critical section is going to get printed into this console. And in the finally block, always I'm releasing the lock. That's what I have written my lock dot exit. 
it always exit the lock and in else as i said if i'm not able to get this critical section i'm just going to print this statement try enter thread could not enter critical section okay and then there is the method i have written print final counter value and i'm just printing this final counter value into this console window okay so that's how this field class has the content now come to the next class that is the program class that has main method so this main method is an entry point of this application so first of all i'm just printing this statement into console window demo new lock object of c sharp dot net 9 that i'm printing into this console window with the help of console dot right line state then i have created an instance of this lock object demo and then i have created four tasks to simulate four threads trying to modify the shared variable counter concurrently so task 1 and task 2 what it does it uses the lock and enter scope method respectively that's what i have called this modify with lock keyword and modify with enter scope method in task 1 and task 2 respectively and next two method that is task 3 and task 4 use the manual enter exit and try enter method so in task 3 what i am calling i'm calling modify with manual enter exit method which is defined in this lock object demo class right so i'm just calling over here and in task 4 i'm just calling this modify with try enter that's what i have written obj lock object demo dot modify with try enter and then i have issued this statement task dot wait all task so what this statement does it makes sure that the program waits until all tasks finish their execution before printing the final value of the counter in line number 109 i am just calling this print final counter value method which is defined in this lock object demo that's what i have issued this statement over here obj lock object demo dot print final counter value so what it will do it will go and call this method and print this statement into console window final counter value and whatever the counter value we have at that point of time it is just going to print into this console window okay and then finally i am printing this statement into console window all task completed so now you understood how program is structured let me execute the program and show the output to you okay so output got appear into this console window if you see demo new lock object of c sharp 13 dot net 9 got printed and then it is printing enter scope thread 8 entering critical section enter scope counter value is 1 so basically counter value is incremented by this enter scope method in this section and then try enter thread 11 could not enter the critical section so thread 11 was trying to get this critical section but it it did not get success so this else part got executed and this statement got printed over here. and then enter scope thread 8 exiting the critical section and then manual enter exit thread 10 entering critical section manual enter exit counter 2 so here we have incremented counter value by 1 so 1 plus 1 equal to 2 that's what this two value got printed over here and then manual enter exit thread 10 exiting critical section and then lock thread 9 entering critical section which is incrementing this counter variable by 1 so that's what i have printed this counter 3 then lock thread 9 exiting the critical section so what is the final counter value final counter value is 3 that was updated by the thread 9 and that's what this final counter value got printed into console window then all task completed so you have seen after all task have completed the program prints the final value of the counter so this value represents how many times the counter was incremented across all the thread so the locking mechanism ensured that the value is consistent even though multiple threads were modifying it simultaneously okay so that brings me to end up my session today To sum up, in today's video, we had a quick overview of the new lock object in C Sharp 13. It's powerful tool that makes thread synchronization simpler and more efficient, especially in multi-threaded environments. So, give these techniques a try in your own projects, and you will likely notice improvement in both performance and code clarity. That's all for this video, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.